Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It is Sunday, and that means we start off strong with the one and only Laura Morby. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. So uh, the last couple of weeks or the last couple of discussions we've had, we've been talking about the housing slowdown and all the buyers disappeared and oh, woe is me. Things are staying on the market a whole three days without an offer now. And geez, the world is ending. And then last week, I don't know about your market, but my market, the buyers came back. I put a condo on the market Friday. It's, it's in contract Saturday over asking. It's crazy. So uh, what's going on in Phoenix? So I don't think that they're back as in full force as they were, but I think people have definitely woke up from whatever slumber they were in. And so, yes, we've had some listings that were sitting there that are finally getting traction, which it was to the point where it was like, should we take these off for a while? <laughs> like what's going on? Um, no, I, I want to ask about that. Hold on. Yeah. So they were, they were, li- you've been saying they listed for a while. They're kind of stale. No action. <laughs> now, was this like seven days, nine days, or are we talking like 45 like, days? No, it's just like two weeks. Oh my God. So, you know how warped that is. You and I have been on this yeah, business a long time. You think I know. two weeks a long time. It really is. It has created though, where you have agents call you prior to them showing the house. So buyer's mm. agents are what's wrong with your house? (laughs) And I'm like, well, you know, everything's kind of sitting right now. It's not just us. Nothing's wrong with our house, Yeah. but it's like, it's, um, it's a feeling. It's not just like myself or the investor who owns the property who's stressed Yeah. it's, or who's creating this like paranoia. It's that our, our, our buyer, our demographic who we're selling to has this feeling about the house that isn't true. Yeah. And so it's something to where we're like, okay, if everyone's calling us and everyone's assuming something's wrong with the house, do we just take it off for a while? Do we restage? Do we clean? Like, (laughs) what do we do? Yeah. So, um, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if, if like, it's like, if you, if you have like, think about something like way smaller, say you walk into Nordstrom and like you're in a, you're, you own Nordstrom and everyone who's walking through is like, well, what's wrong with this dress? Why is this here? Mm. What's wrong with this, these shoes? Why do you still have them? And you're like, nothing's wrong with them. This is normal for right now, but you might start thinking like, wow, do I need to redo the setup of how the shoes are being displayed? Do I need to pull the shoes off and get new shoes in for a while? Like you start thinking of like, if you're, demographic of who you're selling to yeah think something's wrong then you start to like become a little weird yourself that's it that's it i like that analogy right because again i don't you don't know this but i worked in retail for like 10 years you know high school college a little bit after college and yeah i mean if if, if you're used to like the end caps right what they call the end of the aisles and end yeah. cap yeah you always put your big sale items or what you think is going to be the big big margin right there because that's what people always see right they may not go in the aisle but they see the end cap And I remember sitting there um, every Monday after the weekend, uh, you know, after I was there years and making decisions and and having those conversations, like, why didn't Router sell this weekend or whatever? And it's like, dude, it's 4th of July weekend. People are out on the lake, man. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But you start to get like, even if you know what's going on, you start being like, okay, well, if I'm trying to sell something and my buyer isn't biting, what kind of bait do I need to do? Should I you know, come back to this later. Yes. But it's good that it's coming, going back to normal a little bit. Yeah. I mean, and not full blown crazy to where you have 45 offers on something, but where stuff is actually selling again. And that's nice. Yeah. So in my example, uh, so I flipped the house, I don't know, call it 90 days ago, kind of same quality, same area. Uh, We had, uh, that was still when there were restrictions. So we had, we had literally lines out doing walkthroughs. The first day it was listed or the first full day. Yeah. Um, I think we lost count at like 47 or 48 people coming through. We had over 20 offers. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that was that was nuts. Re- <laughs> similar price point too. So yeah. now, right, this conversation, July's been relatively, or it's been slower, right? All my agents are telling me that. It's like everything is slower. So we listed a condo at top of market, probably a little bit over. Mm-hmm. And, and I fully expected it to sit for 30 days. Uh, yeah. lo and behold, we, we had, um, I think we ended up with three phone calls and again, this is all from my agent, right? Three phone calls, two showings, uh, and, and two offers. Uh, yeah. and, and again, the beauty of our business, you only need one. Yeah. 
right? So uh, it went into contract last night, not 24 hours later, over asking. So oh, nice. Yeah, con conventional, 20% down. Yeah. Uh, none of those FHA requirements. So uh, looks like a pretty solid transaction. But what yeah. I'm hearing from my agents is buyers are coming back, right? It's not, it's not crazy, but it does feel like the start. It feels like July and August are over. Everybody got their vacations out of their system. Yeah. Now they're back to shopping for homes. Would that be kind yeah. of a fair thing in Phoenix as well? Absolutely. The only thing that I am noticing about the buyers that are coming back is that they were there through July and August more than likely, hmm. or at least their agents were. So um, there has been, in my opinion, a little bit of price fluffing from my sellers where okay. they're like, well, things are going so crazy. By the time we're done, we were thinking of listing at 825 and now we want to go 899. Oh, geez. You know, so there's like these pads in there Yeah, that the house isn't going to appraise. And these buyers that are coming back are not doing the well, I'll waive my appraisal. Or, or I'll go 20 over. Or, yeah. So right. they're, they're, the offers are coming in, but they're, you know, like, although we, we may be getting a full price offer, they're right. not offering their firstborn child. Like, they were yeah. And I think that's much, that's a much healthier market. What we Media. saw in April was the was most bad. insane market I've seen in 20 years. I know. I it agree. Was, it wasn't, it was good. Yeah, yeah. What we're, what we're heading to seems good. And again, what we really need to get to is more of a balanced market. How, how's the inventory been in Phoenix? Are you seeing it increase week on week or do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is up and, but not crazy, but yeah. yeah, it is up of course, because there, I mean, stuff isn't selling as quickly. So days on market go up and yeah, but it's more like, even though people are getting nervous about it, it's just more normal. It's not like it's anything yeah. that's like, we're going from a hundred folks to 40. It yeah. feels really slow. Yeah. We're still going 40. <laughs> I know. And then we're going to get, you know, we have our interesting thing here where we have a ton of snowbirds who come here. Ah, you probably don't experience that as much in California. It's California year round, good weather. Yeah. It's wet or dry here. People don't want to be here <laughs> yeah, in like August really September, but October, we're going to get a whole slew of demographic of people who are going to start ah, coming in. Yes. And so I, you know, I foresee, you know, at least in those types of homes, like if you're currently flipping anything in a 55 and over, you're going to be in good shape again, because people okay. are still going to come. Now I, I have a question about that, Laura. One of the things, I, and again, I don't know Phoenix at all, but I've been readings for decades. One of the, one of the biggest demographics for, for, I don't know if it's Scottsdale or Phoenix proper for the snowbirds is actually Canadians. Oh, tons of Canadians. Right. Yes. Did they kind of, were they, did they just not show up last year because of the border and travel and all of that? Like, are yeah. they, what I'm asking really is what I think is going to happen is you're going to get like a double hammer of Canadians. You're going to get last year's crowd and a new crowd. <laughs> yeah. And that could go really crazy. Yeah, it could, it could. So I think it's going to be a good time if you invested in anything in 55 and over, I think you're going to be back in good shape for sure. So um, definitely, definitely interesting. I don't know. It, it is interesting too, because we're kind of also coming up on like another um, lockdown of sorts and like other, you know, like, although Arizona is not locked down, but we're talking like throughout, you know, different parts of the world and different parts of the country are becoming more Mm -hmm. locked down. And so I'm like, is this going to start trickling to, to our market? Mm -hmm. And how much did that and I'm trying to like rack my brain mm -hmm. in 2020, like how much did that affect us? Because there's just so many crazy things about 2020 that that's oh. not exactly one thing that I was paying attention to, yeah. or that I can remember off of the top of my head. Yeah. But then I'm like, Oh, our market's just getting back to normal. But now Delta variant is going crazy. And is that going to affect our business? Like, are we going to have people that is it going to affect our business in a good way we, where we have a ton more people who are staying at home again and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden they want to leave and they want to change their surroundings or is it going to be bad to where people aren't leaving their house? Like what's going on? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. So I have an opinion on that. I've been watching it obviously pretty closely. I think, yeah. I think we're going to run this thing over. I think it's already peaked. I think it's rolling over. Yeah. I think the media makes it uh, scary a lot more than it is. It's obviously tragic, you mm -hmm. know, when death occurs anywhere. Right. But as far as an economy, Yes. Right, I think we're going to run it over retail sales. I report, I have a daily financial news. So retail sale, mall based retail, like gap express, uh, all blew out their numbers. That means people are shopping again. People are not buying on Amazon and Etsy and eBay. They're going shopping. 
um, you know, tr like the things that will be hurt are those discretion, like cruise lines. I don't think I'd want to be on a, you know, be buying a cruise stock yeah. or something. Maybe airlines take a little hit. Um, but really uh, what, what we learned last time is space is good, mm -hmm. right? People want backyards. Um, people would, people left the states that had lockdowns, think New York and California, they came to places like Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you have a lot of things going for you. I, you know, uh, I think topic number two, we'll talk about like evictions and things of that nature, mm -hmm. which could hurt. Uh, but I don't, I think, I think Delta is going to prove to be a, a non, non-economic thing. I think, I, like I think, that. I think the, I think the consumer is back. I think generally speaking, the economy is back. The job picture is brightening up. Uh, like extra unemployment is going away with the eviction moratorium is non is unconstitutional. The system is going to start working again and not being messed up with all these extra government intervention. I like that. I am. I, I'm glad that you said that because that was making me a little bit nervous this week where I'm like, oh, I kind of feel like I can take some pressure off and things are going back to normal. I'm like, yeah, I think you can. They, is the rug going to get pulled out from us again? Or are we no, gonna there, there'll be certain areas that that unfortunately get a if anything happens, it'll be very localized, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But even okay. those areas that we're hearing are getting hard hit have already peaked and the, the numbers are rolling over. So yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, I think, again, I think generally speaking, the economy from here starts to function more and more normal week after week, month after month, yeah. quarter after quarter. So it is interesting too. have you been watching the people that um, I forget what I was looking at. I, I'm talking to the king of data and I'm going to tell you yeah. a little study, but it was like um, percent of households that are in financial distress. Okay. And it was like um, seventeen percent of people consider themselves in financial distress, which I'm like, that's actually not as bad as I was thinking it was. So that yeah. means eighty three percent of people are like doing fine. And when I'm talking doing fine, I mean having babies and spending yeah. money and buying another house. And mm -hmm. you no, know, like there is, yeah. there are a lot of things that show that things are actually healthy. Although yeah. we may have some like supply chain stuff and like yeah. The coronavirus obviously still exists, but like yep. things are um, not what I expected them to be. I expected like there are like a, a lot of people and I know we're talking like probably sphere things too here, mm -hmm. but I feel like the amount of people that are in financial distress are not as crazy as I was thinking. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things, right? There's a lot of a lot of numbers being put out there that are put out there purposely to scare you to create an emotion. Yeah. Right. That, like there's 1.4 million people in uh, for uh, forbearance. Well, there used to be 4.1. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> of the four point, you know, of the 2.6 <laughs> that are now out, only 1% cured with a short sale or foreclosure. Right. So right, right. that's that's folks, that's 40,000. You know, that's 40,000. So yeah, that is yeah. that is a nothing burden. You could drop 40,000 homes in most markets and they'd be <laughs> they go away, let alone 40,000 in the country. I mean, it's the a country, nothing, right, right, right. Nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. So again, that's nothing there. Um, then they talk about, you know, all of these evictions uh, coming. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, we had evictions before this crisis, right? Yeah. People are talking about, you know, I don't know what it is. Eight, I see lots of different numbers, 4 million, 8 million, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in 2019, we had 4.5 million evictions. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like evictions didn't happen before. I know. Yeah. Yes, it's crazy. This is another thing that I wanted to see what you thought about it, because I mean, again, a different generation, not too far off, but mm -hmm. um, my generation is full of people who, you know, are more of the socialist mindset who think that people shouldn't be mm -hmm. allowed to be landlords. Um, yep. And one thing that I've noticed as a professional is there's not enough rental houses, like for the amount of people that need a place to live, there's not enough. And there's not enough, like, multifamily apartments for people either because you go to an apartment and they don't even want to tour you to go look at an apartment because they don't have anything and they're not going to have anything until February and get out of here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we need more people to buy more rental properties because there is such a massive, like there's still, in my opinion, is still a massive lack oh. of rental properties for people. And then if you are a tenant, like you wanting to do this to landlords is actually bad because like the less people that own rental properties, the more, the more expensive rentals become because there's a supply demand thing. Like I just went and toured something that three years ago would have been rented for half. 
It was covered in bugs. It <laughs> smelled terrible. It hasn't been updated since the 70s. It <laughs> wasn't in the best area. And it was almost $2,000 a month. Yeah. And five years ago, it probably would have been a thousand or under. Yep. And so it's just like, there needs to be more, like more, if this is encouraging to anybody, as someone who helps tenants too, like I want more people, buy more rental properties, please give these people who need a place to live more yeah. of a selection, more of an opportunity to get something. We need more people buying rental properties right now, in my opinion. Absolutely. You know what? We're going to close it here because that's going to be topic number two, because we're going to tie this in with the eviction moratorium. But before we do that, Laura, how can people follow you, be part of your world or reach out to you to buy something? Um, my Instagram is Laura Morby. And my life is a little bit crazy right now. So if you reach out to me to buy something in like a month, I'm going to be free. <laughs> but right now I am probably not your best person, but right now I'm to be com completely honest, I am like up to my, I'm barely treading water here. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. But um, yeah, my Instagram is Laura Morby with no spaces. Yeah. Follow Laura Morby on Instagram because it, it just puts a smile on my face every day. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Yep. Thank you.